things. Um, the man should always be responsible for keeping the home. He's very conservative in that sense. Mm -hmm. And um, doesn't necessarily think having joint, joint accounts. He thinks everybody should get their assets together. Is that another way of looking at also the plan? Like, I expect, if my expectation is, uh, I don't want to work, I just want my man to pay all the bills, mm -hmm. And that's it. Is it something? Is, is this also? Is that also part of the plan that people should if, be aware of? If if I think that ev before you get married, everyone should voice their expectations of what mm. they think should take place in the marriage, so that you're on the same page. If you're not in agreement, that man might say, "I need you to work in order for us to have the lifestyle that we want to have. We both will need to work for a season. Perhaps later, you could be released to just be at home." Mm. Um, and those are goals. That's once again a goal that you set. What type of lifestyle do we want? What will be required to attain that lifestyle? How long will this go on? What are my expectations? Um, I wanted to stay home with her children until together. All these things should be discussed. You Most know. people is, is, is a supplies. They a get surprise. the supplies. Yeah. When, when, when it comes down to it, because they, they, they haven't discussed it. Right. Okay. Um, so in that process, you think if you're able to do this, it can actually help maintain a healthy relationship, you're able to do this, mm -hmm. and honestly, because that's another thing, what if, what if you have a dishonest partner? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's very bad, uh, but I think, don't we always know, I think we always know, um, I think that we always choose to ignore what we know, and it's very harmful, because we hope that it'll go away and that things will change, and eventually all the chickens comes to roost, and you know, all we can do is shrug our shoulders and say, oh well. At the end of the day, I kind of suspected it. So why uh, set ourselves up for victim mentality and victimhood? I think that we should know these things up front. You know, I think that when we are transparent and accountable to one another and know where we're going, that it adds excitement to a relationship. You are partners. You're, you're partners in crime. You're in cahoots. You've got a plan. You're working it out. Um, and when you don't, there's a division there. You don't walk together the same. So I think that it is very important to discuss where are we going in life together, what do we want to accomplish, and how can we help one another? Um, you know, there's that whole part of, of um, holding someone accountable. How's that project going? Let's discuss it. You know, being interested in what your mate is doing and, and championing them and celebrating their progress. All of these things make you closer. Okay. Do you know what? Okay. What? Okay. What if though you have this this plan within your relationship, and maybe for the first year everybody both sticks to the plan, mm -hmm. and then at some point one one person doesn't start starts deviating from the plan. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? Well, even deviations need to be discussed because okay. life happens, so we have to be flexible. Perhaps the economy is now not supporting the plan that you had mm -hmm. for that little side business. How do we make the adjustment? Uh, let's be realistic about this together instead of both going into a panic or blaming one another okay. for not having a good idea. Um, life happens. The conditions have changed. So now, what do we do? How do we shift? I mean, that's how you run a country. That's how you run a business. That's how you must run a home. Okay. Be um, before we finish up on this, one of the things, too, should the plan always only just be the two of you? Or is it advisable when like any negotiations, mm -hmm. if it gets too much and you can't agree, bringing in a third person, like oh, yeah. Yeah, most of us, we may go to get advice from family members, mm -hmm. our religious leaders, or mm -hmm. what, is it advisable to then seek advice to, I guess, before you, you, you settle yes. on the plan, if you can't agree? I think that it's always great to seek advice. The Bible tells us that there's wisdom in a multitude of counsel. Um, but watch the multitude. Mm. Um, be very careful about the multitude. Seek counsel from people who are successful at what you want to do. Not people that just love you or, you know, um, are there to listen to you. Um, really observe their life. And if they're successful in the area that you're trying to be successful, those are people that you seek counsel from. Okay. Brilliant. I think that's all the questions. It is? Yes, it is. Wow. <laughs> no, but I, I know. I think it's actually, I said, I never, ever really thought about it. Mm -hmm. But in other areas of my life, you know, and I think most people have their individual relationship plans. Like, okay, yeah, I want to settle down. Yes. I want to do this. Yes. But they don't 
when they meet that person, don't right. say that and do it properly unless it's safe for marriage counseling. Mm-hmm. That's when they even discover certain things about each other. Right. And and they, they sh- those things shouldn't be a surprise by the time you get to marriage counseling. But you a lot of times that you should know. Uh, these are things, you know, we don't like to ask the hard questions during the courtship process because we don't want to rock the boat. But I'd rather not sink in the boat later when I'm in the boat in the middle of the lake. I'd rather know there's a hole in the boat on shore, so I decide if I want to get in that and boat. Bring a or life not. jacket. <laughs> exactly. You know. So, um, and you know, the biggest go- goal I think is that I think that especially for women, well, men too, um, is deciding: Do I want to be married? Because if I really want to be married, then I select the people that I hang out with and date uh, differently than if I'm just hanging out to have a good time. You know, there are good time people, and then yeah. there's marriage material. And so if you want to be married, then you only spend your time seriously with marriage material. Okay. Um, so you make those assessments. Because I think a lot of times we kind of casually go through life. I mean, the more I think about it, I had a friend who tied a, a string on her finger and said it wasn't coming off till she got married because she decided she wanted to be married. So she was married. Was it removed? A lot of people that were approaching her, mm. she didn't even consider them because Unless she they decided they material. were not marriage material. So she only associated with men and decided to, you know, focus on one guy that she thought was was you know a good match for herself. And she married him. She married him. There you have it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to say a big thank you to Michelle McKinney Hammond um, for giving us that info there on on setting relationship goals. So I'm actually gonna. Take this a bit more serious. Ah, uh-huh. yes, take it a bit more serious. <laughs> bit more serious. Thank you. It's very time. Much. It, it, it's time. It's time. It's time. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's time. And when Mich- okay, Michelle said it's time. All right, I will. I will start thinking about it. And mm-hmm. yes. All right, there you have it on lifestyle. Of course, proudly brought to you by Lipton Tea, inspiration flowing from nature. Make sure you don't go anywhere because there's more coming up on you.